Hi, my name is Ryan Carter. I'm a program manager on the Aperture team. My focus is supporting customers with web app and site compatibility on Microsoft Edge. Today, I'm excited to talk to you about the built-in Microsoft Edge compatibility feature called Internet Explorer Mode and how we can support your legacy apps and sites on a single browser. Microsoft Edge is the browser for business, and we have heard overwhelmingly that IT pros are excited to consolidate the browser state while taking advantage of a faster, more secure, modern way to access their growing inventory of web apps and sites. We support our customers and their legacy apps with the promise that if your apps and sites worked on Internet Explorer 11, supported versions of Google Chrome, or Microsoft Edge Legacy, those apps and sites should just work on Microsoft Edge. If not, Aperture is ready to support you with getting them working and alleviate any compatibility concerns. To fully understand one of the features that sets Microsoft Edge apart from other modern browsers, it might help to know what a legacy site is and what symptoms you might experience with them on a modern browser. Legacy sites rely on pre-HTML5 technology and methods that are not supported by modern browsers natively. The most common examples we see today are ActiveX controls, such as Java or Silverlight. When you access sites that have these controls, you may notice rendering or functionality issues like what is shown in the image. Now, you might be thinking of your app inventory, of all the important line of business apps and sites designed in years past that might not work properly on modern browsers. 60% of enterprises have legacy sites and the cost to modernize each of these sites averages $335,000 while consuming valuable resource time. We have heard those concerns and we have worked to make Microsoft Edge the only modern browser with Internet Explorer mode to keep those legacy sites working. In the Microsoft Edge browser, modern content renders with the Chromium engine, while Internet Explorer mode makes use of the Trident MHTML engine from Internet Explorer for legacy sites. Once configured, as we can see in the image, the site is now being rendered in IE mode and properly displaying the legacy Silverlight content. The only thing that end user will notice is the small IE icon in the address bar indicating the site is rendered in IE mode. To configure IE mode, there are a couple of important policies to set up. The first policy configures where your enterprise site list, the list of sites in the IE mode is stored. The second policy sets how the sites on the site list open. We recommend IE mode for the single browser experience. Policy 3 is optional, but customers have noted it's helpful to enable Internet Explorer mode testing, which allows a user to reload the site in IE mode in the browser more tools menu. We'll cover that more in the demo a little bit later. The last policy noted here enables the in-browser site list manager. This replaces the standalone app that is no longer being updated. Now that your policies are set, it's time to add your legacy sites and apps that need IE mode to your site list. You may already have a site list from a previous browser upgrade, and that's great. You can use that list. If you don't have an existing list, there are some steps necessary to get started. To support our customers with that process, we're excited to introduce Microsoft Edge Advisor, a new tool available in the M365 Admin Center. Edge Advisor offers a streamlined way to configure your deployment options and build the scripts needed to begin site data collection. This collection will become the inventory of all your sites your users are accessing and help drive decisions on how to configure any legacy sites you might have. We'll go deeper into the configuration process in a future session. Today, we just want to focus on the site discovery outputs and what to do with the recommendations. Edge Advisor provides a streamlined way to deploy and configure Microsoft Edge. Begin with some questions about your environment and management tools that will help tailor your deployment process. The Advisor then offers a review of Edge release channels to help you make informed decisions of what channels best suit your environment. Next is the configuration of conditional access and other important security features you'll want to implement. Enterprise Site Discovery is next. These steps will help you with configuring the scripts needed to begin your Enterprise Site Discovery collection. This collection will become the inventory of all the sites your users are accessing and help drive decisions on how to configure any legacy sites you might have. We'll go deeper into the configuration process in a future session, but today we want to focus on site discovery outputs and what to do with the recommendations. Once the collection has been configured to run for enough time to gather data, we're ready to look at the outputs. You'll have an XML file generated that you can use to take a look at your site discovery data. Here you can see a list of the sites users have access over a period of the site discovery collection. The compatibility detection column highlights sites that have legacy controls that might have issues running on modern browsers natively. Soon we'll also have the ability to identify URLs that may need to be configured as neutral sites. Neutral sites may be needed to pass authentication credentials between edge and IE mode sessions. Let's look at this site. We see the site was accessed multiple times and the compatibility detection shows ActiveX is being run. Clicking into it, we see some additional details and options. Some sites have code that will be served differently depending on the browser, so not all sites that are detected will actually need IE mode. 
This is a good reason to test the sites first. First, we'll copy the URL and try to open it in Edge natively. When we navigate to the site in a modern browser natively, we notice that there's a warning dialog showing that Silverlight is required and expected content doesn't render. Having already configured the policy to test in IE mode, we can go to the Settings menu, More Tools, and Open Sites in Internet Explorer mode. Now we see that our site renders as expected. We can now add this site to our site list so users will automatically open the site in IE mode for a seamless single browser experience. Let's go back to Edge Advisor and select how we want to configure that URL to open. We'll select Open in IE mode since we've done our testing to confirm the IE mode renders the site as expected. Since there were no other sites with compatibility concerns detected, we're ready to download our configured site list. Now that we have downloaded our site list to the location we configured in the earlier policy, it's time to test. We can view our site list by going to edge colon whack whack compat. You may need to hit reload for the updated site list to refresh. Once the entries are shown, we can now see the site we tested and configured for IE mode is now present. Now when users navigate to the legacy site, they'll experience the seamless use of IE mode to properly render the content, eliminating the need for standalone Internet Explorer for legacy sites. Now that we've configured our site inventory for IE mode where needed, we can ensure our users of legacy sites are set up for success on Microsoft Edge. We have a new policy that will disable IE as a standalone browser while retaining full functionality of IE mode. This will help ensure your users will use Microsoft Edge as the primary browser with the confidence of knowing legacy sites continue to work as expected in IE mode. With the built-in compatibility features in Microsoft Edge, your legacy sites should just work. But if you need any support, we're here to help. Please reach out to FastTrack for support on your deployment and configuration, or AppAssure if you have any compatibility concerns. Both services offer a no-cost assistance with eligible licenses. You may also utilize your unified support plan for edge issues. We covered a lot of information about IE mode today. If you need any other resources regarding your edge deployment, please check out the following links. We're working hard to ensure edge is the best browser for business and appreciate your feedback. Please feel free to reach out to me at any time on Twitter. Thank you so much for joining.